That's another thing. You embarrass the shit out of me. <laughs> every freaking week, you look like a damn fool. It's time for the Garage Boozing Podcast. What's up, nerds? And welcome back to another episode of the Garage Boozing Podcast. I'm your host, the man with absolutely no plan, the chase with the face for radio, Chase Sherga. And boy, today you guys are in for a treat. On this episode, I am joined by none other than Ray Rod, my father, and just my father only. So just nice little sit-down conversation, him and I, and I know you guys are going to love it. So with that being said, you know what time it is. It's time to sit back, relax, kick your feet up, crack open a cold one, and if you're really feeling fruity, take a shot. Why not? Because this week's episode of the Garage Boozing Podcast starts now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Garage Boozing cha, cha, Podcast. Cha, 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 con. Cha, cha, con. What the hell did you just say? Cha, cha, con. Cha, cha, con. What does that mean? It's a song from 1983. Uh, cha, cha, con. I feel for you. I like to say that when I'm in a good mood. Cha, cha, <laughs> cha, 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 con. But anyway, before I was rudely interrupted... Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Garage Boozing Podcast. Today, I am joined by one very special guest. To my right, your left if you're watching on YouTube, we have my father, Ray Rod, in the house. Dad, welcome back to the podcast. It's a pleasure to be back here. It's about time that somebody adds a little bit of class to your uh, podcast. You have some winners on here the last few uh, episodes. Some, some winners. All right, so you might, might as well lead into that then. Up, oh, I got a lot to say. Oh, he's got it written down. No, I, I'm actually going to go into your recent uh, guess here and, and just... Actually, the guy I liked last week, um, I did like him. Uh, DJ the, the, the DJ, Yeah. I mean, he's not as good of a DJ as DJ Sucker MC, me. <laughs> but um, I liked his vocabulary. He was very hip. He seemed to be very with it. The, the vocabulary words he used, I thought was very impressive. Um so I did enjoy that, and then, oh, of course, a smart uh, guy. Yeah, my, Mike W. Of course, you love. I best. love how you say that Mike W. You know his last name's. Well, Whedon. I don't want. To, I don't. You know, this is out on social media. And All right, stuff. Mike W. You love Mike W. Yeah, he, I mean, he's very knowledgeable. We had some good texting this past week on what your topics were and stuff. He's a very knowledgeable guy. I mean, you should have more friends like that guy. That guy's a good guy. You know, funny. Real quick, before you continue, so you, Mike W. Matt Bashara and Mitch Ferris are all tied for the most appearances on the Garage Boozing Podcast at three appearances. That's pretty good, and I bet um, the ones that I'm in has the most views or downloads. They're always the most popular. Say, right? yeah, that's so funny. This one especially will be, too, probably. Love that. Like I say, much, much needed class. Much Some needed of these class. people are ridiculous. It's uh, the Garage see. Boozing Podcast. How much class can we have? Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, then you had some guy that was like showing up drunk and everything. You Ryan, went, Ryan Winters. Like that? What are you kidding me? Well, I actually the don't guy know. He couldn't even talk. I, he couldn't he's, talk. Jeez. He, and he actually, it's funny because I actually didn't know him very well. That was the first time I met I'm him glad. when he was on the podcast, but he's the cousin of the other guy that was on with him, Cody. Yeah, he so that's seemed why he okay, was but that other guy, holy <laughs> Ryan was hammered. Unfreaking believe. Ryan said that he wants a redo. He, I, re- I hope so. Jeez. Well, he was boozed before he got here, and that's the mistake. Uh, that's a mistake. Uh, Man, I I thought I raised you better than that. Unbelievable. <laughs> like I, I knew he was going like to show that. up hammered. Holy cow. Way to go, pal. It's the entertainment for the people. You still do that MySpace stuff? That <laughs> MySpace stuff. YouTube, yes. Right, uh, I gotta, I, Only for I the podcast. That once in a while. All right. What's this Be Better? Oh, this guy was Brandon Eastman. Be Better guy, man. Holy cow. That guy, I was so pumped. I was ready to, as soon as I was done listening to that, I was ready to go and do like 50 push-ups. And, <laughs> st- and, and, and I got myself all like pumped up. Like the next day I was going to get up early and stop being productive and stuff. I freaking love listening to that. But That's that, fu- that's funny. Brandon's actually coming back in two weeks. He, he, yeah. I, I'm, man, I mean, I'm, I was sold on that stuff. He, and was, he's a motivational speaker. Yeah, he's exactly. Saying. He's I got would, a book for sale saw, on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. I got a copy of it. If I you want the book, I'll give it, I'll give it to I'll you. I'll buy the thing. I don't, what do you think? I'm a freaking abuser? Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> You're not no, cheap. You're not kidding. abusive. I'm, Just I'm kidding, Big Rick. Actually, I'm kidding. No. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, he's a good kid. I do like that kid. He's very good. What about Ben Wilcox? Did you like him talking about the moon and stuff like yeah, that? That was good. I did find it very interesting, although I don't really know if I believe like... 
Well, know. yes, we did prove we we did some research after we have been the the moon yeah, right. back since the first but time that, we went, but we haven't been back since 1972. So we went there in 1970 and uh, 1969. What's, what's, why would you go? What's the need to go back on the moon? Because well, look at the we te- saw it look already. at yeah, but look at the technology we have now versus then. Why are we going to the Mars and not the moon? We haven't even gone to the dark side of the moon. Well, we haven't had human beings going to Mars. It's just like a video. Oh, that's a good point. Good stuff. point. Yeah. But like the moon, there. I, I don't know if you know this, but like the moon has, it, it faces one Cha-cha-cha-cha side. Cha-cha-cha <laughs> He's yeah. in a good mood. When he feels good, he says that. But um, the moon, so any other thing in our solar system rotates as it's going. Like the earth rotates. You don't think I listen to the thing? Okay, so you, you do know yeah, that. Right. Yeah. So what's on the dark side of the moon? That's the scary part. It's not scary. I mean, it's it's dark and there's really nothing going on over there, probably. But you don't think it's weird that like craters hit the moon and they're all the same depth? That's a scientifically that proven that, fact. That is that is odd. And it, 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 it hits the, it and it, it gone. It was interesting what the guy brought up. Definitely, I, he's I a big conspiracy good. theory guy. Yes, but Ricky and Ricky, that was actually Ricky's favorite episode ever. He said he, yeah, he, he did loved tell it. me that. Yeah, he well, loved it. Anyway, we digress. But um, we yeah, digress. I did. I did like th- that uh, episode. Um, there was another one prior to that I'm trying to look at that I'm trying to think that I liked. Um, it's funny. Everybody on here goes, if you start cursing, oh, your dad's not... Yeah, everyone happy. says well, that. Well, you're right. I, there's no need for you to curse like that. What we, we're having a very enjoyable podcast right now, and I, we, I haven't cursed, you haven't cursed. Well, right? I'm not hammered yet. Yeah, that's true. Right. That's right. And I have people from work. It's just a shout out to uh, Ken Ritchie, the greatest salesman ever in the history of the paper industry. The paper business, baby. Yeah, yep, yeah. How many I'll different kinds what, of paper are that, there? I love that, man. I've, oh, a lot. I've been there now for five years. I don't want You've to been there for five years already? Yeah, right? yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, well, there you go. Again. I said shit. I didn't say the F word. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, they've been very good to me. I wish I was there, you know, for the last thirty years prior to that, instead of the other place I worked. See, but I think anyway. I think you're like me though. You don't like change, you know. So like, you, no, I don't. You I were don't. comfortable like where you were at. You, well, you like to say, "Oh, it didn't drop far from the tree," you know, yeah, all, all the time. Stuff. It's yeah. so true. And, I mean, I might be a little funnier and better looking, but other than that, the apple did not fall far from the tree. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Before I ask my first question, I think we should start this off with a beer review. Okay, I brought a beer called. Now, this was a good beer. He brought the beer. So, yeah, so this Utica Club, I used to drink it, you know, when I was your age and stuff, and I would drink that on Friday nights, and I'd go out and drink that and chase tail, unlike yourself, (laughs) who sits here like a loser on a Friday night, just sitting in his garage doing nothing. I'm not sure if he knows this, but we're in a global pandemic right now, so the bars close at 10. So there's no point in going out. All right, but anyway, it's good. Uh, I think you're going to like it because the the beer is actually reasonably priced, and it so tastes really good. You buy it in a six pack. Yeah. How much is it for a six pack? Five ninety two. The the six pack that <laughs> see, I got of that. But see, my ten Natty Light seven ninety nine. You get fifteen beers for seven ninety nine. How do you beat that? No, it's good. I mean, price wise. Yes, mean, but taste problem, does but taste does is, matter. Yeah. This is this is gonna surprise you. You're gonna go like, wow, this is good. I think this will be, and you don't have to say it just because I'm saying it, but I think this will be one of the higher rated ones that you um, that you have had so far on your. Uh, All right, well, let's see if he's right. So this is a Utica Club Pilsner Lager Beer XX Pier, whatever the hell that means. Let's see the percentage because that matters. Mike's like, oh, that matters. Yeah, yeah it does not, matter. It's not gonna. It's not that high, like an IPA. It's not that high like an IPA would be. By the way, you like my hat, right? I, like I do like wig, your hat. That's right? a fedora, right? Is that what they call it? Good verbal skills, yeah. Yep. And I don't we, know. We, I don't know words. We you, we won't use that word for words with chase. Yeah, right. That's another thing. You embarrass the shit out of me <laughs> every freaking week. You look like a damn fool. It's five percent. But anyway, so yeah, try this thing. You're gonna Utica be like, Club. It's very old. It's 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 very it's, now. You know you have to rate it too. Yeah. All right. So what what would be your ten for a beer? You gotta have a beer that's your go to. Uh, you know I do. Well, th- this right now would be considered my go to if I want to drink like five or six beers. Six beers though, you're loaded. You, you, yeah, I well, remember most people. I are. remember before you told me, you, oh, I've never had more than six beers. You said that a couple years ago. I called bullshit on that. I didn't, but since then I certainly have. <laughs> um, but I, I like more of a. Um, like an IPA, but you can't have six of those. Um, flower power is very good. Oh, you've always liked flower power, yeah. but that's expensive, right? Yeah, but but I get, price doesn't matter, yeah, I guess. And you know, right. we, I mean, yeah, we're in a world. Yeah, of, a couple of them, you know, and it's it's 
We're in a world you get what you pay for. Right. I've always that's always what I've said. Yeah. You you, uh, you get what you pay for. What I want to do is I'll spend a little more to get a better quality of any anything really. And see, it's so funny because with Natty Light and me, it's so cheap, and I just love it. I mean, I, you'd you'd get it even if you had to pay you know, absolutely double the price. But anyway, all right. So beer review. Utica Club. You've already had a sip. I'm gonna have my first yeah. sip here. Wow, you weren't lying. Yeah, see, that's you good weren't stuff, lying, right? This, yeah, that's for not the price and stuff. This is good. You could have like six or seven of these, and 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 you have a good time. It's good tasting. First beer sold in the United States after Prohibition, it says. Yep. Grandpa wow. used to drink this back in the seventies. Really? And stuff. Yeah. Oh, so it's been around that long. Oh, oh, oh well, Prohibition. Good, that good, makes good. sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Wow, this is actually very good. I told you, yeah. Very good. You think I'd bring you over some shit stuff like those other assholes that come here and except for Mike W. That's good. That's very good. I could the flavor is fantastic. Mm. I'm all about taste. So I'll let you go first. I always let the the guests go first. Scale of zero to ten. I'd like to say an eight. Just a flat eight, like no percent. Oh, I'm sorry. You like yeah, eight eight, eight, eight eight point one eight point one two five. Oh, that was that was exact. 8.125. 8.125. You know what's funny? And this isn't even to make you feel good. I think I'm going higher than you. This is phenomenal. Wow, I, see, I, I, told I can't you believe this. It was good. I'm not you think I'm bullshitting you? Come on. Utica Club. This is fantastic. Holy cow. I'm gonna be hundred percent honest right now. I'm going nine two. Nine point wow, two. No nine point two. That's the highest that is, yeah, that, that is phenomenal. Wow, that is a I very, told you. very, I told very you. good tasting I'll, beer. I'll, I'll leave the rest of the beer with you. No, I'll take it with you. Take it with uh, you. You're right. I ain't taking. Yeah, it with you no, with that me. is phenomenal though. Yeah. I'm extremely impressed. Draft top. The draft top is an absolute amazing tool. I love this thing so much. So this cool little bar tool. You open it right up. You stick it right on the top of your beer can like this. Give it a little twist, a little left, a little right, a little friction. I like to say. Get your mind out of the gutter. But yeah, boom, top of the beer pops off, and it makes it look just like this. So forget about a red Solo cup. I'll fill you up. Your beer can just became a cup. So why pour your beer in a cup, do the dishes, waste plastic, when you can drink it right out of your can with your draft top? Makes for a total better drinking experience. You can smell the aromas of the alcohol. You can chug your beer a hell of a lot quicker. But yeah, I want you to have one. You want you to have one. Draft Top wants you to have one. So you can get your very own Draft Top right now at www.drafttop.com. And don't forget to use promo code 10% dash garage boozing. That is 10 P E R C E N T dash garage boozing for 10% off your very own Draft Top and site wide. Their entire website. Anything you put in your cart, boom, 10% off. Use the promo code. Get yours now. Thank me later. Back to the show. Weird. Damn, this beer is good. It's. Damn, this beer is very good. I'll tell good. you who another guy I liked here is the guy that was doing the ghost hunting. Oh, Steve Brock, yeah. yeah. I should I, I got to have him back. Get to uh, have him get together. A guy that I graduated grammar school with, Anthony S. Grammar school. Okay, S, for, we'll for those of you that aren't from the city, what the hell is grammar school? Middle school? From, from uh, kindergarten to eighth grade. Oh, okay. Anthony so. S. We'll call him. He, I follow me with friends on Facebook, and he's big time into that ghost hunting. I should get him... To to talk with Steve, you know, if they really, you know, they're yeah. both very into it, they would probably, you know, have a lot of stories to tell. <laughs> I love how people call it ghost stuff. hunting because that's really not what it is. But like, when you say ghost hunting, that sounds like what it is. But like, they're not hunting ghosts. It's like it's paranormal activity. So like, but uh, he invited me on a, on a couple of these things. I was a part of the group. Scary as hell. But yeah, that that stuff is. After a while, like then I got busy with work and sales and stuff like that. I so wouldn't like, want to get involved in that anyway. That would scare the crap out of me. Absolutely. Actually. Like, I'm. Yeah, what I if you get possessed? Yeah, I wouldn't want to. But I mean, that stuff's got to be true. I mean, there's so many Has people that have witnessed ghosts and stuff. So I mean, it's. So what about aliens? Do you think? Do you think aliens are true? They got to be. Well, I mean, there's so many planets out there. There's there's Has bound to be. to be life out there and. I would believe, yeah. I, I disagree with what Luke, who thinks there isn't any. I, I think that's so ignorant. Ignorant. There has to be. Well, it'd be, be more respectful. I mean, I wouldn't call it ignorant. I would just call it freaking dumb. <laughs> oh, that's respectful. Do you think if they did come and attack us, we would have a chance against them? <sighs> that's a tough question. I don't think we would at all. I, I would like to say I would like to say superior. yes, but I would with the amount of pl- it, so if if. 
aliens are coming to Earth, they're not in our solar system, I don't think. I think they're coming from light years away. Yeah, but if that's the case, they, how would they get here? Because I've always heard that if we were to, say, travel to, I don't know, say, Ju Jupiter, it would take years. And if somebody came from another... Light years is what they call it. So that's the speed of light. That's what the yeah. spaceships and stuff like that travel right. the speed I mean, of light. We, we can't go that fast, the speed of light. So Correct. We're, we're assuming that the aliens can go the speed of light. Well, if, we're, if they're more advanced than us, maybe. I don't know. That's the scary part. Our solar mm. system is so huge. It creeps me out. It, it does creep me out to think about it because like... What about black holes? D those are real. Like, of course they are, but I don't know what happens when you get sucked into one. How about we're actually living inside a giant human being? I've I've heard stuff like that too. Like that's the thing. Like our cells, our molecules, we don't know yeah. what they look like. You can't see that right. with your human we, eye. We could be a cell or a mono molecule. Yeah. I to a uh, you know a giant. We or could something. be. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who knows? It it it's weird. It's creepy. I, I I just don't know. Nobody knows. I hope I know. I hope I know before I die. I feel like now which is actually going to lead me to my next question. But now living in 2020, hopefully I live another 50, 60, 70 years. Uh, 2021. Oh, it is 2021. You're right. But like, I feel like if we're going to find out, it's got to be sooner rather than later. Like, I don't know if we'll ever really find out. I, I, that's the thing, though. If they, if they knew there was life here, don't you think they would come? Or do you think they... How, how do you know they're not living among us? A lot of people think that. I don't know. I mean, and then a lot of people say also that... Um, uh, some will say some other planet or, or uh, I don't know, I wouldn't say human being, but uh, other beings actually brought life to earth. To earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as a test to see like how things went and stuff. So I don't know. And that's that. That's another thing that creeps me out because like I want to be, a, I want to believe in like Adam and Eve and stuff like that. But like sure. if that's true. And what do they do? Bring Adam and Eve here? And then like, I don't know. Mm. Do you ever think about the fact that you're going to die one day? Yeah. One thing that disturbs me about you is you seem to be very scared about that. Don't I'm worry horrified. About it. I'm know, horrified I mean, to die. But yet you say that comment, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Correct. So I want to enjoy my life while I'm here, but I'm terrified to die. Yeah, and anyone that says they're not terrified to you, die. But is... you would want to be here then for a long time if you're afraid of dying then. <laughs> That's a valid point. That's a yeah, very valid but, point. But I mean, it's all something we're going to go through. I mean, no sense being scared about it and stuff. So you're not scared to die at all? Well, I mean, nobody wants to, but... It's going to happen. Yeah. And then once you're dead, you're just gone. Well, you, you'd like to think you're in heaven or there's something... I would like to think so. Yeah. I would love to think so. And right. like, I, I, I pray that that's true. Yeah. But, but nobody really knows. Be I mean, there's nothing you can do to avoid it. So that's don't, true. don't be worried about it. Well, I mean, it's not like I think about it every day, but like when I actually like if someone brings the topic up and I think about it, like, oh, I'm going to die one day, like, I'm like, shit, I'm 27 years old, I'm almost 30, like, I got a lot of life ahead of me, yes, but, like, there's so much I want to do in that time. And it's, I, I don't know. I, I just think that everyone needs to take their life and enjoy every minute, every second of it, because you only get one. Yeah, well, then there's people, though, that think and believe in reincarnation also. Sure, though. reincarnation, yeah, great, but, like, you don't remember your previous life with reincarnation. If we're all reincarnated, do you remember your previous life, if that was a thing? No, no. but I, I used to know people, uh, my friend Billy D from Queens, he had a, his mother was big into reincarnation, and she used to go to a uh, a hypnotist that would put her under, and then he would speak to her about her past lives, and he would record everything, and she'd be talking about how she was a pirate and how she was involved in you know certain centuries and stuff. That was very interesting. Did you ever witness stuff. this? I, I heard it on the tape. But really? I, I wasn't there to watch it, but I heard the tapes of her discussing that. Wow, okay. So, so that's that, interesting, too. So, that, I mean, that's always a possibility. So, I, I mean, we're never going to know. Hypnotist, you know, like, know. I, I would love to get hypnotized because I, I don't know how much I believe that. Like, I don't know. I would think, I would be worried about that because I would, I would want to be in control. Like yeah, I don't like being in Yeah. They're, they're I don't like, like not being in control. Oh, go ahead and do, you know, like when we used to, like when I worked in my other job, they had a hypnotist and he had like a coworker go up and say, now bark like a dog. And, you know, they'd be doing that and stuff. And like, yeah, I like, wouldn't want to be like out of control where like a some puppet. guy's letting you do that and, and, you know, telling you to do that and you do it type of thing. All right, folks, let me tell you all about the pump action shotgun tool. Whoa, there's a tool for shotgunning? 
Hell yeah, there is. So listen to this. The pump action shotgun tool created by the drunk engineers. Love that name, by the way. It makes shotgunning a hell of a lot easier, and let me tell you how. So you're going to take your beer, and you're going to stick it right in the shotgun tool, like this. Hold it like that so the air pockets are up here, and you're going to give it a little squeeze. You're going to hear pop, bam, pop. But look at that, no mess. So right now, the air pocket's right up here, and you're going to want to make sure you take this, push that down, and then what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the tool. Hold the beer can in place to the mouthpiece. Then you're going to put your mouth on the mouthpiece and shotgun. Ah, and boom, no mess. You can shotgun at the dinner table, family events, wherever you want with absolutely no mess. So forget shotgunning, slamming a knife right through. Yeah, not a thing anymore. Thanks to the pump action shotgun tool by Drunk Engineers. And you can get yours right now. So just log on to www.drunkengineers.ca. Don't forget to use promo code GARAGEBOOZING for 15% off site-wide. That's right, promo code GARAGEBOOZING for 15% off site-wide. Go get yours now. Thank me later. Back to the show. So viewer question here from Mike, uh, w. Mike w. He says, quote, Here's a question I often think about. Growing up as a kid when you did, or would you rather would you rather have grown up in this time? And he's saying, same for me. So this was a question for you. He's saying, when you grew up as a kid, would you rather grow up when you grew up, or would you rather grow up now yeah. in times? You'd rather grow up now? No, 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 no. I'm saying I'm saying that's what he meant now. Yeah. Yeah. I would say I, I enjoyed the seventies and eighties, so I'm glad, even though we didn't have the internet and cell phones and and things like that. I I thought yeah I wouldn't want to change it. If anything, I would want to maybe have grown up in the forties or fifties because that sounds pretty cool too. Right, like when grandma and grandpa grew up. That yeah, sounds the best. Like that, but um, yeah, but just think of. I mean, you have no TV, really no. Radio. Yeah, but you didn't know TV back That's then. That's right, right. So personally, me, I think growing up now sucks compared to like back then. Like techno- think really? I think technology ruins like ruins things. If that's the case, what just get rid of your phone then? Well, no, that's the that. thing. I, I can't because it's my main communication with people, like stuff like that. Like, I, it is everyone's got a phone now. You got to communicate that way. But back then, when you didn't know what a cell phone was, you didn't know what a TV was. I feel like that's life true. was just so much simpler. It was, and it was yeah. just like so. Now, like, say you have a girlfriend, for example. You, nowadays, you're texting your girlfriend 24 seven. If she's not answering, you're thinking, "What's going on?" Back then, like you had a party line, like everyone, even before phones, like it, like it, it just seems so much simpler now. Social media now, uh, so many people see their girlfriend like a picture on Instagram. They're getting, they're freaking out. Why did you like this guy's picture? It's just so much tox, toxicity. Is that the word toxicity? I think tox, I, toxicity. I don't know. I'm as bad as words yeah, with you. Toxic. And you said I'm, I embarrass you, but you're as bad as me. Okay, yeah. If the shoe fits, but. Everyone says, like, social media is so toxic, and it's so true. You see so much toxic stuff. Say someone goes somewhere, like, a, like they, they go to a store or, like, a, like a car dealership. They have a bad experience. You're going to hear about their bad experience ten times more than you're going to hear about their good experience. Who goes yeah, on social true. media and you're says, right. I had a great experience here. Thank you so much. Very rarely. Everyone always posts the negative on social media and stuff like that. So social media leads into technology. I, I just feel like when grandma and grandpa grew up, the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, life was so much simpler back then. Yeah, it was, yeah. But I I'm mean, not saying I would like to grow up in like the uh, 1700s. Like. Yeah, no, I, I would, I'm happy that I grew up when I did uh, Mike W as opposed to uh, now. Like yeah, when, I, well, when, I can't complain. Where were you yeah. born? 1963, right? Yes. 63. I think that that was like such, especially for like, people that are still alive now like that was the prime because i mean one you're seeing like the beatles and stuff like that then you get like the motley crew after that and then like bam early 90s then computers are born and stuff like that you just saw so much in such a short period of time nuts yeah which actually i mean grandma and grandpa 80, 89 and 91 think about the technology that they've seen grandpa born in 1929 grandma born in 1931 the amount of technology that they've seen in 90 years is wild wild they saw the creation of tvs and stuff like that it's, yeah. it's nuts and grandpa was born during the great depression yeah that's true but like i i also think that back in 
when they were growing up, people worked a lot harder than they work now. Oh, yeah. Uh, America, yeah. May, I don't yeah. know about other countries. I'm going to speak for America because that's where I live. Yeah. Americans are lazy. Yeah. Very, very lazy. People would work as much as they have to, and then they'd be done. Grandpa was unemployed for how long, and Grandma never knew. And then he, he gets a job, and he he was taking the bus and the subway to work every other day, and like Grandma never knew. No, no he didn't want to take the bus because it was expensive. He didn't want to take the bus or the subway because it cost money. So he was walking like a mile, two miles, whatever to work. 45 minutes to work, 45 minutes back. Imagine people doing that nowadays. Never. Never. Would you yeah. catch me walk, walking 45 minutes to work? My car breaks down? No, I'm calling out for the day. Yeah, yeah. Nuts. In different times, absolutely, yeah. No, and, that's true. And it's so funny because Grandpa always gets, like, he's always like, oh, you need to relax, you need to do this. I'm like, Grandpa, what were you doing at my age? You were working, you were doing this, you were doing that, you know? Like, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, I, I, out, of, like, out of the past hundred years, I think if I could pick a, a decade or whatever to grow up in, I think where you grew up was... 70s and 80s, you know, I'd perfect, say. Perfect, yeah. perfect. Yeah, definitely. No, that was, that was right. I went through the Son of Sam... What is that? That was that was this guy that was going around killing people in the late seventies in the city, in New York City. Yeah, everybody was scared and stuff. The son of Sam? Yeah, you never heard of him? No. Man? Oh man, it was a big thing back then. We well, know Charles Manson apparently because I heard of no, him. No, that was back in the sixties. But I, yeah, he was kind of brutal, Charles Manson. But you know, Charles Manson never killed anybody. He just told people right, to kill people. Right. But son of Sam did, and now he's actually in prison, I believe, up in the Plattsburgh area, not too far from really. Us here. Whatever prison is up there. So he's there. like a serial killer. He was, yeah. yeah. At the time, now he's he's repented, he says, and stuff. But who knows? But yeah, he used to go into when when there were um, a couple in a car or something. He'd go up and he'd shoot them. Just out of nowhere, yeah, just yeah, point just blank? Shoot them, boom, yep. Jesus. What kind of sick individual yeah, do you have to be? Do. The like son of Sam. Sixties on, yeah. Yeah. Was his dad's name Sam? No. So who the hell's his name? name? Was David Berkowitz? Oh, I just yeah, I type in the son of Sam right as you said that David yeah. Berkowitz. Yeah. So why do you call himself the son of Sam? I think it might. Have, I don't know. I was I was I was a lot younger back then. I can't remember exactly how he the got forty four caliber killer. Yeah, that was another nickname because he used that. Yeah, due to the weapon he used. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. From July 29th, 1976 to July thirty first, nineteen seventy seven, before he got caught. So he's yeah, only going for like a year. Crazy, yeah, but it was it, it, people were very scared in the city back then. So, back when you were growing up and, and like seeing the Jetsons, I know you corrected me on yeah, saying that's it, you right, know, yeah. what Meet George Jetson is what it is, right? Yeah. Meet, meet George Jetson, yeah. So you're seeing all these flying cars and stuff like that. Like when you were growing up in the seventies and eighties, did you expect to see flying cars? In I actually did. Yeah. Right, everyone did. Yeah, right. Yeah, I thought we would see that. So do you think technology got like a flat line? Like what? What's well, the I'd, big technology we've seen the past few years? Other than cell phones, fifteen years ago, like cell phones are advancing, yes, but like I feel like we have yeah, to have not nothing within the last few years. But I mean, the cell phones certainly are a, you know, that's pretty good. Uh, Computers remember, have been the same for a while. I remember my grandmother used to say, "Yeah, when you, you get older, you'll be because we'd talk on the phone, and she'd say you'll be able to look at the person when you talk on the phone." And I mean, we can do that. And now. we Facetime, and Grandma and Grandpa yeah. blows their mind. We'll call my cousin, yeah. my cousin in Florida. Every like holiday and stuff now, they'll always FaceTime me. I'll set the camera up for Grandma and Grandpa. They're, they 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 don't even under they, they're going nuts. They're like, Eric, can you see me? Can you hear me? And it's so funny because like we growing up with this yeah. technology, we understand it, but then it's it's nuts. So that's funny that she said that. Yeah, yeah. She would. I mean, that was back in the seventies. You know when we. So that was one prediction when it was right, but like flying cars, I, not a thing. Yeah, I don't think we'll ever have that really. I yeah, I don't know. I I feel like. I feel like there's a lot of technology out there that we don't know about. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know either. What was one of your favorite memories growing up? Probably the the Undertaker shirt. I was just ta- I was literally just talking about that because next week I got my friend Marat and George on here, and I just ordered my uh, garage boosting title belt. We'll disclose that later about how it's going to be defended. But um, and I was showing him the video how you- I just shared it on Facebook today about me. Oh, uh, you did. Yeah, earlier today about me catching the Undertaker shirt. And that's funny you bring that up because um, they're airing a new show, which is all about WWE memorabilia or something on A&E or something like that. And um, it's where Triple H and Stephanie McMahon, they go searching for like old WWE memorabilia and stuff like that. Whoa. So I'm thinking, is this going to be worth money one day? But Whoa. how do I prove that this was actually on The Undertaker, that I actually caught it? You know, like it's an old it's an old school shirt, but like 
that is definitely one of my favorite memories growing yeah, up. Yeah, I would think so. But I do have another one. I loved how Riley lived like six houses up the road. So Riley, my best friend growing up, like literally my brother. One, I would come home from my babysitters and me and my dad would get home and my dad would pick me up after he got out of work, bring me home, and Riley would be sitting on the front sitting porch. Right on the porch. With, his rest, just sitting there, yeah. Yeah, with his wrestling action figures. Yeah, just waiting for he, us to get home. Because back then you didn't have a cell phone. I couldn't text him and say, hey, I'm on the way home, like stuff like that. He just knew when we were going to be home. He'd be sitting there 20, 30, yeah, however many, right. many minutes. He'd be sitting there on the front porch waiting for me. And it was so funny because Riley lived on our street. So like if I was going to Riley's house or Riley was coming to ours, our parents would always go to the road. Do you remember you guys would go to the yeah, road and huh. watch us walk down the street? I thought you were little kids. Yeah, n- exactly. Right. But imagine nowadays like having eight, nine, ten year old and your son walking down the road. To their front. That doesn't happen now. Like I, I would say, hey, dad, I'm going to hang out with Riley. We'd go ride our bikes and we'd be back four hours later. Now you'd never hear that now. You know, like it's always, where are you? Where are you? What are you doing? What are you doing? Like it, it just, things are so much different now. Yeah, things are different. Kids yeah. would rather play video games than go outside. I'm glad that I grew up in a time where I could go outside and play games. What yeah. was your favorite memory growing up? Stickball, street yeah, hockey. Yeah, st- right? Exactly. Yeah, those two things. Absolutely. Now, what exactly is stickball for those of you that don't know? You'd you'd play it in the street, and it would be a, it wouldn't be a baseball bat. It would be a long stick, and you would just bounce the ball up and then swing. What kind of ball was it? Um, a sponge ball or a tennis ball. How's a sponge use. ball? It was be made out of sponge. Really? And so then sometimes we would even use a rubber ball. So then a car would come. You say car, yeah, right? That would be more with hockey, though. That's wild. Yeah, you, never, you never see kids playing outside like that. No, and now no. in New York City, where you grew up, I went to Glendale a couple of years ago for New York um, uh, New Year's Day. I remember I sent you a picture of like all the parking on the street. There's like cars on every oh, single side. Yeah. It didn't used to be like that, no, right? No, not at all. And they're all one way streets now. They didn't used to be like that. Nope, nope. Yeah, I'm, I mean, shit. We're talking forty something years. Yeah, when I was there. Yeah. So when you when you moved up, because Grandma and Grandpa moved up here before you did, right? Right. What What made you say like I'm gonna leave the city and move up to Queensbury? Yeah, well, I was I was young and I, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I I was still living at home, so I would have had to have gone and gotten an apartment and. So when they moved out, where did you live? No, I stayed in the house until it got sold. Oh, so the house getting sold is really yeah. the big thing that made you move. Right. I mean, if if the house still hadn't gotten sold, I'd still be living there. <laughs> I wish they hold on to the house because that house sold for like almost a million dollars a couple of years ago. Crazy. But yeah. who would have known that was going to be a thing, right? Yeah. Well, real estate is the big thing. Absolutely. If you, if you want Property, to, man. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's good stuff there. Um, well, so like were, you, like, were you sad to leave your friends in the city? Like, Yeah, I didn't, li- I didn't like it at all, actually. I, would, I would, wish I would have stayed down there at the time, but now I'm happy I came up here. Yeah, you have no desire to move no, back, right? No, I'd go to visit, but that's it. Yeah, it's... Same with grandma and grandpa. They have yeah. no desire to no. even go back. They don't want to. Like, don't don't you want to see it? Yeah, that this, this is. I mean, it's a nice area where we're living up here. So, um, yeah, any more questions? <laughs> no, I, honestly, I think I I think we're good. You, unless you, you got anything, you didn't. I thought Big Rick was saying he sent in questions and stuff. No. He didn't send in. Big Rick said he did. Yeah, he didn't send he in a single question. He didn't send. Shit. Yeah, he didn't send me anything. He, he probably thought that it. That, that you had to pay a dollar or something for a question. No, yeah, I'm right. Kidding. I'm kidding. No, he's a good guy. He's not. He's not. He's certainly not a a cheap skid. I joke around a lot, but he's not. You know, I'm I'm very glad that he's my godfather and that you guys have the friendship that you had because there's no one else in the world that I'd rather have my godfather oh, than Big Ray. It? Let me get a tissue. That's yeah, so no nice. for real though. Like he he's fantastic. The no, bu- the abuses are our family. That's our you know, it's family. That's you nice. know. Yeah, that's very good. Yep, I agree. Yeah. Right. Other than that, I I got nothing unless Good. you do. Like, no, I don't. I got to piss so bad. It's not even funny. Mm. I already pissed twice during this thing already. But uh, how many times did I? Zero. Because I adversity. adversity. I knew he was gonna exactly. say I handle adversity, and I can't even title this episode that because that was the first one you had. Utica Club. Utica Club. Phenomenal beer. You should be proud of me. One because I didn't say the F word once in through this entire thing, and two, that's a fantastic beer. You picked a good. I, can, I, I can't. told you, yeah. I knew. I I wanted to choose one that I think you would like. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, that that was easily, easily. I mean, I've only done like five or six beer reviews, but easily the best I've had. Yeah, definitely, man. Absolutely for sure. All right. Well, before we send off, you you, you good? You got nothing to say? Oh yeah, I do have something to say. 
My name is DJ Sucker MC, and I'm the best. All the ladies say my voice is rated X. I'm a touch of lightning, taste of fire. I'm Sucker MC, and I'm your desire. Yeah, boy! Yeah, boy! All right, folks. Well, thank you for tuning in once again, and we'll see you next week. All right, goodbye. Wow, what an episode. I knew a nice sit down with me and Pops would be a great one. But all right, folks, thank you so much for tuning into the Garage Boozing Podcast once again. Please don't forget the absolute number one way to support the brand. Buy some merch. We've got hats. We've got hoodies. We've got t-shirts. We've got everything. You name it, we got it. All available at www.garageboozing.net. And of course, please don't forget to follow us on all of your favorite social media accounts at Garage Boozing as well as YouTube. And you know what I'm going to say next. Make sure you're following us, liking, subscribing, whatever the button says on all of your favorite podcast platforms so you can be notified when a new episode is released. Pandora, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever it is, you name it, we're there. Oh, and please don't forget to check out our good friends over at www.staythirstyco.com. And use that promo code CHASE for 25% off. They've got some real sick apparel. Get you something nice with Mr. U on it. Thank me later. But I've said it before and I'll say it again. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Once again, your support means the absolute world to me. And you guys are the reason we're taking this thing to the moon. But with all of that being said, looks like we're out of time. So I'll see you nerds next week. Ladies, gentlemen, and nerds, do you have what it takes to be a guest on the fastest growing, alcohol chugging, and nonsense talking podcast? Well, now is your chance. The Garage Boozing Podcast has new guests every week, and you could be one of them. Just simply log on to www.garageboozing.net, click the Be on the Show tab, and submit your information. It's that simple. Join the boozement or be a loser. Don't miss your chance because we're taking this to the moon.